What's up everyone? We are back in the garage and that means we're making content for you guys and uh, while I was away uh, I got an email from Blackstone with the results of the oil analysis for the GR86. So I'm excited to share those results with you guys. So first and foremost I want to catch any of you guys up. If this is your first video on the channel, welcome. If you guys have been watching for a little bit, uh, you guys will know that I've done a little series on the GR86 and I'm going to continue to do a series on the 86 as parts of ownership, uh, kind of giving you my short-term, long-term reviews on the car. I'm also going to go over any improvements that I've done. I made a couple of videos uh, on some of the items that I've done thus far. And then I want to address some of the uh, widely discussed issues that are online, one of which is RTV, oiling issues, engine reliability. And so I'm trying to be one of the people uh, on the internet who are doing data analysis on their cars and one great way of doing that is by getting an oil analysis from Blackstone. So as I mentioned in one of my previous videos this is my 2023 Toyota GR86 premium spec. I purchased this in April of 2023. I have roughly about 1500 miles on the odometer as it sits today, which we're at the uh, tail end of October here in 2023. Uh, so I know I haven't driven it a lot. I do plan to drive it a heck of a lot more in the coming months and a lot more in 2024 for sure. Uh, but with that being said, I did want to get an oil analysis on the very first oil change. Uh, which included the break-in oil that this car was filled uh, filled with from the factory. So I know the results, or I expected the results at least, to be a tad bit skewed just because it is the factory oil, which is going to have some wear metals uh, and, and just typical break-in things that are normal for a vehicle that was just manufactured. So again, I fully anticipated the results of this to be a tad bit skewed just for the simple fact that uh, it was the break-in oil uh, and it was the very first oil change in the car. But with that being said, I am excited to share with you the actual results. So without further ado, I'm gonna dive into the report. As I did with the Toyota Solera video, I will share a copy of the report at the end of the video. So if you're simply just wanting to look at the data, you can uh, fast forward at the end of the video if you'd like. You can pause it and you can actually look at each specific category and see how it compares um, or stacks up, if you will. Uh, there's several folks on uh, YouTube that are actually doing uh, oil analysis. Uh, BTR is one of the ones that I've been following. Uh, I think guy's name's Justin. He's been doing oil analysis on his. And I think the other one is Phelps Garage. Both of those guys have been doing oil analysis on their cars. And frankly, they've been getting good results. Both of those guys track their cars. Um, and so, you know, I think they're on the more extreme side in terms of use case for this car as it sits today. I'm just having fun with the car, taking it up to the mountains, driving it, and commuting in it. So mine is probably more baseline usage there's just probably more extreme uh, so if we could get somebody in the middle i think it would be a happy medium of you know really showing a wide um, data analysis for these cars so without further ado uh, if you ever do get a blackstone labs report they often put a comment section up at the top of the report to give you kind of a brief overview and so when you pay for these reports you can actually put specifics in there of things you're looking for. Are you looking for uh, engine wear? Are you trying to get more longevity between oil changes? Uh, are you looking to see how the additives are in the oil? There's a whole lot of different analysis they can do uh, and they'll put that in the comments. Mine was just the general basic oil analysis for this car. As time goes on, I may want to get uh, one of the more advanced um, analysis done just to see how the engine's doing. But they said, hello ATP Garage, there's no evidence of abnormal wear or RTV issues in this Subaru's first report. And I highlighted the RTV issue in my analysis request because as you guys know, one of the most widely discussed topics on this car is the RTV issue. And so they did confirm there is no abnormal wear or RTV present in the analysis uh, that they did run. They said wear metals and silicone are pretty high but that's not unusual for a factory fill. Again, having the factory oil in the vehicle and having done the test on the factory oil, we kind of knew that to be, uh, to be the case. 
They said that the metal comes from parts, carving, working clearances, and silicone as sealers, lubes used during assembly. So if you're not familiar with engines, when they're first assembled, they're assembled with uh, lubricants, or typically what's referred to as assembly lube, uh, to keep the metals from wearing against each other. And as time goes on, that lube kind of works its way out. And, it's get, and, and actually, the oil that you put in the vehicle takes place of that over time to lubricate the internal combustion pieces of the car. So it's not shocking to hear that there are uh, some lubricants from assembly uh, present in the oil. They did confirm, as the engine sees more oil changes, levels should come to resemble the universal averages based on 2,800 miles uh, on the oil for the FA24s. Basically what they're referring to is the average oil change intervals that they have uh, received analysis for, which is around that 2,800 mile uh, range. They also did confirm that the viscosity of the oil, which in this case is 0W20, was in spec and then that no notable fuel dilution was found, which is good because that means that we don't have a stuck injector or anything like that that's actually diluting or um, you know causing the oil to degrade. They did say that uh, trace and uh, trace insolubles show good oil filtration, meaning that the factory oil filter was doing a good job. It was filtering out any contaminants, things like that, so they didn't see an issue there. And frankly, the um, factory Subaru filters, specifically the the black uh, labeled ones that you, that come straight from Japan, are actually infamous for being really, really good, high quality filters. Um, when I had, a, I actually owned a Subaru Crosstrek at one point, and it was very hard to get those filters. Most of the time, the dealerships only uh, uh, provided you with the blue ones. Uh, but this car did have the factory black labeled um, Subaru oil filter from Japan, which I think they all come with that um, from the factory. And so I'm going to try to continue to get those filters because, again, they do a really good job. And the last thing that they said is they recommend doing another test uh, as time goes on, maybe in a further interval, just to see, uh, just to check in to make sure that all of those assembly lubes and things like that are actually washing out as designed so that there is no further issues or doesn't present uh, an issue in the future, I should say. So it's really encouraging to hear that after the fa first factory uh, oil change that all is good in the engine all is to be expected based off of normal uh, wear items from a break-in period uh, which is good that was the other thing I wanted to be mindful of is Subaru does ask that you do a thousand mile break-in period for their vehicles uh, which is unique because back in the day that was pretty common to do a break-in period in a vehicle oftentimes there's a big debate online now about do you need to break in a car do you not need to break in a car I've seen on the new I think it's the Ford Mustangs, uh, you know, the high high performance models uh, have a, a break in period. Uh, and so, you know, this having a break in period really isn't that bizarre, um, but it is kind of unique that uh, some manufacturers don't require it any longer. Uh, Subaru, Toyota was very specific on theirs though. It is a thousand miles. They ask that you keep it under a certain uh, my, uh, RPMs for those first thousand miles, which I did. Uh, it was a bit painful, albeit, uh, because you had to really early shift and be intentional with keeping it down below uh, the RPM range that they've asked you to do. Uh, but it seems that all is well with my engine as of today. And so that is the other purpose of this video is to document uh, the car along the way throughout my ownership, just to show how things progress or digress, depending on how uh, the engine holds up. I mean, it, it is, uh, it's a, a manufactured engine after all. Uh, you know, there have been uh, reports of these blowing up, and so this is just me documenting uh, my car along the way, and I'll definitely keep you guys informed throughout my ownership to tell you how uh, this thing's holding up, because I do plan to keep it for a really long time. Uh, I was one of the ones that was fortunate enough to get a uh, lifetime warranty on my car. Uh, I have read the documents pretty extensively inside and out. Uh, regarding those documents uh, and what's required of me to maintain that warranty. And so this is just added uh, support for that in the event that anything does happen. I can prove that I'm doing the maintenance, I'm running analysis as a precaution, uh, and I'm also doing anything I can within my power to make sure that this uh, remains a reliable, good car. So, like I said, guys, I really do appreciate you guys for watching. If you are inquiring about these cars or on the fence about buying one hopefully this will help you have some reassurance that 
uh, you know, they are good cars. Uh, I think it's just a dependent on a lot of different factors in, in terms of what causes them to fail. Um, you know, they are manufactured, mass produced, if you will. Um, so you're always rolling the dice. Uh, you know, the joke's always like, don't buy something that was made, you know, at five o'clock on a Friday. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, something that's mass produced. There's bound to be a few bad, uh, bad apples in the batch. Um, but yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully this gives you guys some, some peace of mind if you're considering buying one of these or you already have one. Uh, and then again, like I said, myself and several other YouTubers out there are um, getting Blackstone analysis done on our cars at various intervals. Um, I do plan to keep doing this uh, for, for uh, the considerable future, just to keep an eye on the car, just to see how it's doing. Uh, I may actually start, I don't know if you can see it on camera, I do actually want to start doing an oil analysis on the 2021 Forerunner because I have since learned that uh, on the forums there are folks having issues with these cars, which is crazy because fourth, uh, fifth gen Forerunners or Forerunners in general are known to be the uh, the apocalyptic car uh, because they're just that reliable. Um, and so once I read about that, I've considered actually doing an oil analysis on that car. So if you're interested in that, that may be up on the channel here soon as well. Um, but yeah, I really do appreciate you guys for watching. If you've got any questions that I haven't answered in the video, uh, or if you want to see the detailed report and it actually breaks down the elements and parts per million or the properties, uh, that's all listed in the report. Like I said, I'm going to share a, a photo of this report at the end of the video. So feel free to pause the video and take a look at the report in detail if that's something that interests you. But glad to hear we got a good report on the engine in this car, as to be expected, since it's uh, got literally only about 1,500 miles on the clock. So, uh, you know, I didn't really expect anything out of the norm uh, in terms of this report. So it was just reassuring to get that from Blackstone. Again, not sponsored by Blackstone, but if Blackstone by chance happens to see this video, I really do appreciate the, uh, the product uh, or service, if you will, that you guys um, provide for the community out there. Uh, it's pretty reasonable. I paid, I think it's like 35 bucks for the oil analysis. It's pretty reasonable to have a lab uh, test the oil that you're actually sending in, uh, so which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, uh, completely not sponsored. I'm paying for this on my own dime, but uh, hopefully with uh, YouTube at some point, maybe it'll start paying for it. Um, but yeah, I really, uh, hopefully that doesn't turn into a rant. I just want to say again, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.